This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You are watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. How's everything? Everything's good. Uh, another day of training down and, um, yeah, looking forward to a fight date. Hopefully have something announced um, sooner rather than later. So, Could it be an Anthony Joshua fight? Potentially. <laughs> Look, it was, it was looking likely at the start. You know, um, I think Eddie must have leaked it to IFL TV or, you know, obviously they got it from a credible source. Um, didn't come from me, but, you know, it looks like he's signed with his new trainer and uh, he's not too fond on fighting the Southpaw or probably never again unless he has to fight the champion Southpaw. So, um, yeah, I don't know. These American coaches, mate, they mustn't like Southpaws too much because we had the same problem with Dillian White. We got to about 75% done with the contract, even writing up the contract about potential fights after once I beat Dillian so um and then he signed with Buddy McGirt in America and he said no South Force so seems to be the story of my life mate it's just a reoccurring issue and it's quite sad to see some of these top level guys picking and choosing who they want to fight just due to the stance that they uh, compete in so we um we kind of come to like a top three top two um, fight off with Tyson Fury a few years ago as well Actually, and his team turned around and said no South Horse. So, um, you know, those are three big fights, like I've said in the past. <clears throat> I've been on the fringe of these big fights for a while now, and every time it's stemmed down to being a South Horse. So it's, it's kind of hard to land that big fight and, and, and show everyone this is the level that I, I do believe that I belong on. So, In some ways, I kind of understand it because South Horse are complete opposite to what you're used to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're a different breed, mate, that's for sure. And like my manager said, we should have been drowned at birth. But, you know, it's, it's a big <laughs> asset for myself. But, you know, some of these guys, <clears throat> some of these guys, they've got extensive amateur careers, you know. They should have been fighting and sparring Southpaws throughout their career. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've never had any amateur fights at all. I've only ever had the 22 boxing fights that turned professional on in a day's notice after only competing in um, a handful of MMA and Muay Thai fights. So, yeah, so... um. You know, I would happily fight a Southpaw, you know, it's risk versus reward and given the opportunities and stuff. And, and you'd think if, if while we have a Southpaw champion in Usyk, you think guys would want to be test themselves against Southpaws on the way up to fighting one. You know, we've had some good opportunities for good sparring camps in AJ's camp and Dillian White's camp due to the fact they were supposed to fight Southpaws. But that's kind of um, as far as it's gone. Okay. So if the AJ fight doesn't come off, I mean, I'm sure it would at some point, but if it didn't mm. come off next, what are you looking at? Are you looking at like the top 15 in the world? Yeah, well, like Eddie's promised a big fight. Like, I need a big fight, man. Like, um, I've been waiting patiently, been very patient. He's promised a good fight. He said, you know, if you dispose of your previous opponent with a good knockout, we'll, we'll give you a big fight. Like, he's, he's mentioned Trezora, Zhang, Herkovich, AJ, Dillian White. So, like, any of those guys would be good names as well, you know. It's, it's not there's not so much a bridging fight that I've had to get in that top-level fight, but uh, I feel like I'm ready for a big-name big fight and, um, yeah, more than more than ready to fight. Now, how would a fight with you and AJ go? Because obviously you guys have shared the ring for your camp. You was in the first Usyk camp or, or, or were you in both? Yeah, I was up um, for the first one maybe for about a month. That's when I first moved to the UK, um, September 2021, I think it was. And then, um, and then, yeah, I, was, I went up there for about a week just to help me out in the second fight. They did want me to go to um, Saudi Arabia, but I, was, I had to focus on my own training. I was happy just to head up there to Lothbrook University where he was training just for a quick week just to do some rounds with him, help him out and, um, and whatnot. So it's, it's good rounds, man. Like the first camp, um, first camp, uh, we've done a lot more sparring. Obviously, I was only up there for a week for the second one, but he did make some improvements in, in the second camp that I found leading into the second Usyk fight. So under Robert Garcia. But, um, yeah, it's good rounds, co good competitive rounds. Like, I give all these guys. I do a lot of rounds with Daniel Dubois and obviously in camp with Dillian White. And I give them good, tough rounds, mate. It's, it's very competitive, that's for sure. So uh, I back myself fully against any of the top-level guys. And I've said it many times before, I know sparring is different from fighting. And I'm one of those guys that perform better on fight night than I do when I spar as well. So, so now, I said this before, I've been saying it ever since... Um, Joshua fought to Uzi for the second time because he said he hates fighting southpaws. I said, well, that's good. Keep mm -hmm. fighting southpaws in, until you are good at it. I know. I know, right? <laughs> you're not good at something, you think. But even in like the off-season, you know, why, if, you, if you have that much trouble with them, you know, do some technical sparring with southpaws. Get southpaws, southpaws, southpaws in, so And do some technical rounds and start to learn a little bit more. So, I, um, when I was in camp with Dillian White, I, I tried to get some Southpaw sparring in with the other heavyweights that were in camp and he did have some shoulder issues. So he was like out of sparring for quite some time. So I was sparring the Southpaws just to 
to get a bit of uh, you know general knowledge and on how to work them as well. And don't get me wrong, it's it's, it's awkward when you're not used to it. But that's a, obviously I didn't have any amateur fights. I never come across any southpaws. I've never fought a southpaw, but um, you know, I'd, I'd still take. I wouldn't turn a fight down. I would fight Zhang any day of the week, and he's a southpaw. He'd be the first southpaw I've ever fought. So opportunities arise, you just got to take them. That'd be a good fight. I'll be well up for watching that one. I know. Um, it's a good fight. I think Tony Tony likes that fight as well. Tony Sims, he, he thinks it's a good fight for us with my speed, my fitness as well. <clears throat> Jang's getting a bit old. He, he doesn't have the best conditioning and all the work rate. So um, even even Herkovich, I wouldn't mind a fight with Herkovich. You know, he's just been kind of pushed back from um, from a world title fight. I think they've just said the WBA um, mandatory, which is Dubois, gets first preference over Herkovich. So Herkovich can be sitting on the sideline for a year plus. So um, why not fight a southpaw in the meantime, you know, and get ready for Usyk because he's a southpaw. So it could be a good little pitch for us, depending um, what the offers are like and whatnot as well. And, you know, once again, that's a win. One win there is straight into a world title fight, take his num number one mandatory position. And then I could be uh, next in line for the, you know, undisputed unified titles or whatever is available at the time. So That's a great thing about the heavyweight division. Once you're in the top 15, which you are, WBO, mm. WBF, I believe, and you're literally one win away from getting a world title shot, really. I know. Well, that's that's the opportunity we have with Fury. Um, I think it might have been the second or third fight with Deontay Wilder, but there was... Remember when Fury was, wasn't was going to fight him or Deontay Wilder didn't want to fight, so they were looking for a replacement fight on short notice. I think it was like five weeks out for his WBC title. Um, and I didn't think they had the biggest budget, so they were kind of going at the the back end of the top 15 world rankings. So I think he was looking at myself, Effie Jagba at the time, and... and as you cabello, um, you know, and I think a couple of those guys priced themselves out. We said, look, we'll do it for the money that you're offering. And then I think it maybe Simon Keane, the Canadian, was in the mix as well. And, and uh, yeah, that's when his team turned around and said, yeah, we don't want a southpaw. So, and I think at the time I was 14 or 15, you know, and not even in the WBC either, you know, and they're looking at us as a possible world title defense. So that is a good thing about it. You can get the call up any time and that's, more the reason to kind of stay in the gym, stay fit, stay ready, and yeah, wait for that call up because these opportunities can rise at any time. Are you still looking for that huge fight, or or it certainly will be in your neck of the woods? But I think it'll be a big fight here in the UK as well against Joseph Parker. I know. Well, um, Eddie was really keen on that one as well. He really wanted to make that out in Australia, but it's probably going to be a bit, a little bit harder now that he's um, he's made the move to Sky Sports and whatnot. So, you know, I don't think they see to eye to eye boxer and uh, match room at the moment so but Joseph Parker's team did reach out to us um, recently I think it might have been maybe a few months back for a potential fight and I think it was before the Joyce fight and then the Joyce fight ended up getting made so um, yeah that, that fight could definitely kind of be there as well just depending on different broadcasting contracts and you know we're in different promotions so it could get a little bit sticky but that's that's a fight I've been kind of chasing for quite some time as well Now speaking of uh, Down Under should we say You've got yourself, you've got people like um, uh, Justice Hooney, you've got uh, Joseph Parker, as, as we said there as well, um, like Jeff Horn previously, uh, Tim Dezu, mm. Tim Zoo, and uh, 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 George Cambosis Jr. Ebony Bridges is yep. on uh -huh. fire there, there in a minute. We've we got um, another female um, champion as well. I can't remember her name. Neeks, Neeks Johnson as well. So she's the IBF champion. I think she might be even fighting Ellie Scottney. Coming up soon, I think. I think like I think she's the mandatory. I think Scottney, Ellie Scottney is the um, um, mandatory for, for the IBF title. Can't remember the division, whatever the division she fights in. So, yeah, we've got another female world champ there. we got, obviously, Zoo fighting for the undisputed titles coming up. Um, Liam Paro, my stable mate, he's number one at the moment. He's going to have some fight fights drop mate. soon. Yeah, well, he's under, he's under, he's from Brisbane as well. So um, he's from Ace Boxing Promotion. So we've kind of grown up on the same promotion and always fought on the same shows too. So we both got signed by Matrim around the same time also. So he's pretty good, he is. I didn't know that uh, you guys were like, together. <clears throat> yeah, so I think he's going to be over. Um, yeah, I think he's just waiting idly because obviously Josh Taylor is still holding on to that WBO belt and he's been number one for about one or two years now. So. Hopefully he gets his shot soon. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. And what do you give, like, a Tim Zoo's chances against Charlo? It's a tough fight, man. It's a very tough fight, but you obviously you got to... Back to again. Um, upsets do happen. So, you know, he, he's a good... Um, punches and punches. He's got a quite a high work rate, and he's got some good knockouts on his resume as well. So I wouldn't rule him completely out. And, 
and he's hungry as well, man. He's, 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 you know, he's fighting for the undisputed titles. You know, he's working his backside. He's been working his backside off for quite some time. He's been over in Thailand doing camps there. He's been in training. So it just depends what Charlo's doing as well. Has he been training this whole time or has he been kind of taking time off and then getting into camp? There's a lot of factors there, but it's definitely a tough fight. Would a Lucas Brown fight interest you at all? Was that sorry? The Lucas Brown fight interest you? Uh, is he is Lucas Brown fighting as well? Well, I mean, um, would it interest you? Would you like to fight? Oh, him? we, oh, mate, I've been chasing that fight for years and years. I had a contract with him um, just before I fought Jonathan Rice, actually. So I was scheduled to fight Lucas Brown that night. He pulled out of the contract, stuffed us over. So then we ended up getting a fight with Jonathan Rice instead. Um, and then his fight, I think he was he tried to take a fight in Vegas against Otto Wallin, and that fight fell through. Then he came crawling back, asking for a fight. And then when oh. Matrim come to Brisbane, we offered him the fight for the Matrim card, even though I didn't want to give him another opportunity because he stuffed us around. He's been talking shit for years. But it's the right over, we'll fight him again on the Matrim card. He turned that down, didn't want that. And now he's been stuffed around with the Manuel Char fight. And now he's come crawling back and he's calling me out again. I said, mate, you can't do this. All right? We've given you two opportunities now and you want to waffle on and, and talk about me, how I'm scared. And I said, you've pulled down the fight on us twice. I said, I'll happily fight you, but... He's still a good name on the record, you know. He's coming off a couple of good wins against um, Junior Far and um, Django out of Australia as well. So he's, um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's, oh, I would have loved to have slept him years ago, but um, unfortunately, he didn't want to partake in that too much. So that's what I said. I, oh, man, I've been on the fringe of some of these big fights for quite some time, and they've just kind of fallen through their fingertips. So just got to be patient a little bit longer, and and you know, my time will come. Although well, there is an interesting dynamic if you do end up fighting Joshua next. With uh, Tony Sims, he was in the corner for Anthony Joshua for his first what three mm. or four fights. I think four years. I think he was with him for about four years. I think it was. Long? I think yeah, Tony was saying. So it's quite funny because AJ actually <clears throat> got in contact with Tony. I think about a week or so ago, and he said, "Look, I'll come in and I'll pop in and see you before I go to America." And then obviously all this stuff's come out about me and him, and Tony hasn't heard back from him as you would imagine. So. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. So that obviously that's a that's a big advantage, you know, having having AJ's former trainer and you know having the inside scoop and you know obviously Tony kind of knows what makes him tick and certain attributes that he's got. So that's only like a, a big advantage for myself right there. So what about fights this year? Then how many fights are you looking to have? I'd like to have at least three. Obviously, it's um, more active the the better you compete. I only had the two fights last year, obviously with a broken thumb badly broken thumb in the uh, the fight that I had against Bracamonte. <clears throat> so like three fights. So we're looking to get out probably like end of March, start of April is obviously the date. So we're kind of looking at around then we'll be ready to go and then just got to stay injury free, touch wood, and then um, try and, you know, get some of these big fights. It obviously gets a bit harder, like the higher level you go up against, you know, it's um, the fights become a little bit more scarce and a little bit less per year, but I think three fights is a good number. Four would be perfect, but see what um, Eddie can produce. Okay, so basically you want your next fight to be against a top-rated opponent and then mm -hmm. hopefully challenge or at least be in a position for a mandatory or knocking on the door of a mandatory by the end of the year. Yeah, definitely. Like Worst case, my realistic goals are I'd like to be in the top five at one of the sanctioning bodies, you know, and I think that's easily doable after, you know, one you know, decent name fighter, you know, even against Zhang, I think Zhang's like number six for the IBF or maybe WBL or something, I think it is. So, yeah. you know, pretty much take his position. So I think that's a, that's a definitely a re uh, realistic goal to have this year is getting to the top five and to even fight for like a mandatory position would be even better. So I think the best thing in the heavyweight division that we can wish for is Usyk or Tyson Fury um, beats one or the other. They retire. They give up the four belts. There's four world title belts available then, and then that can speed up the heavyweight division a little bit, and that way you have four different world title fights because it is tough when there's an undisputed world champion. Now, it holds up the division for so long, so long as you've got four different mandatories trying to make big fights as well, trying to – it's it's a nightmare. So, um, you know, it's you know, a lot of guys' careers are on – look at Canelo. He held up that division for so long while he jumped up divisions. He was undisputed champion, and – Guys like John Ryder are, are waiting patiently, and you know, so it's good when you when you are the undisputed champion. Don't get me wrong, but when you're on the way up and on the climb, you know, it's 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 a uh, long drawn out process trying to wait for those world title fights to um present themselves. That's good though. I mean, of course, it's good to have an undisputed champion, but then afterwards, fragment all the belts and then build up again. Then it creates more big mm. fights, more money in everybody's pockets. Why not? Yeah, definitely, exactly, and it's more of an opportunity to make the bigger fights as well. 
you know, four different world champions fighting mandatories or top rated guys. <coughs> big big fights there as well. Look at look how hard it is to make bloody Fury and AJ and you know all these other fights. I'm sure if there's you know four belts up for grabs, it'd be um, a lot easier between the promotions to make those fights. Definitely, and uh, with you being on Matchroom and Design as well, there's plenty of opportunities there for you. Definitely, you like I said, like. Up, I know, I know, that's right. So, but it's, it's kind of like, you know, until I kind of beat that bigger name and get that respect in the heavyweight division, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have that respect. And, and that's just how it is. So just even, even getting like a bigger name and, and seeing who's available and taking that, taking that person out. And then maybe more people want to fight me as well. So it's a little bit hard when you're kind of unknown on the top level and you, you've come from Australia on the other side of the world where the boxing is not the biggest out there, but I made the right decision by moving to the UK and setting up with Tony Sims and in the matchroom gym and signed by matchroom. So it's a step in the right direction. Well, what about a fight with like you and also Wallen? I've been interested in. It would is once again he's with a different promotion. I think I don't even know if he's signed with a different promotion. So um, that is a potential fight. I actually did see something recently that a, a while back AJ might be fighting Otto Wallin as well. So, but um, who knows? I think um, we're probably in the same position of our careers as well where we're at. But obviously he's had that big fight against Tyson Fury. So, and that's what I said. Some of these guys when they rise to the occasion, they shock people because people people rule them out straight away. Um, exactly what you said, you know. So, but yeah, until I until I get that big fight, you know. Until then, pretty much, keep working hard. All right, Dempsey, I appreciate your time. Is there anything you want to add? You want to call any sucker out? Let's go for it. <laughs> Anyone, Herkovic, do you want to? Um, you know, mandatory title fight, fight a Southpaw before you fight in, um, you know, Usyk, the, the Southpaw champion, you know, surely you want to get that Southpaw fight in, but any of the top guys, you know, even a fight with Chisora would be good, Dillian White, I'd love a fight with Dillian White, honestly, I think he's he's a good name and he's a good stylistic matchup for me and I, I think I box his ears off, you know, every day of the week, so definitely. Cool, so contact your manager, get the fights on then, that's the message. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely. So, yeah, hopefully we can get those fights made, definitely. So, um, fingers crossed and, and put a bit of pressure on these guys. I totally agree. I appreciate your time. Thanks very much. No worries. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it.